Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Um, thank you uh, so much for being here. Um, it's my pleasure to be here and talk to you about um, the latest drug um, used in the treatment of Erham Jester that will be referred to as ECD throughout my talk and the latest toxicity management of these agents. So I don't have any financial relationship. Um, I would like some, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe next time this year, right? Yeah. Patients into two groups of patients. Uh, patients that um, have a BRAP positive and patients that, have B, that don't have that mutation, so we refer to as BRAF negative. Now you can see on the treatment um, in the slide that the treatment for the BRAF positive patients is actually different, so slightly different from the patients that um, have BRAF negative, and 50% of ECD patients have this mutation, um, and that is the BRAF gene B600. So for the um, constraint of times, I would like to um, focus my talk on the uh, BRAP positive patient uh, because there's a lot of drug toxic toxicity uh, that we can basically, basically talk about and discuss uh, today. <coughs> so typically for a BRAP positive patient, you can see that we use more of a targeted therapy um, so right now we use BRAF inhibitor. So right now we have three on the market, Zebrac, Tapular, and Braptobi. Now these agents are actually approved for melanoma, uh, but it's been used um, quite successful in the treatment of ECD. Now what happened if we fail the BRAF inhibitor? So your next alternative would be using a MEK inhibitor as well as your interferon, okay? Um, so today, we will talk about the MEK inhibitor as well as the BRAF inhibitor. So how do these drugs work, basically? So on the screen, what you see is a, a signaling pathway resulting in cancers, for thyroid cancers, but a lot of cancers, I mean, all of the cancers behave the same. So what you see here is you see a cell membrane and the diamond is the growth factors, and then the Y shape is basically the receptor. So whenever you have a ligand that buy into the receptor, what happens is that you have the key, what we call a key lock fit. So when that happens, that will basically signal a lot of these pathways that needed for the uh, proliferation of cells uh, to survive, and uh, that including the BRAF as well as the MEK uh, pathway. And so upon the bindings of that growth factors, you will have serial of um, activation resulting in a lot of uh, cell growth. Now typically in a normal person, what happens is that you have the tumor suppressor gene. And that gene is basically um, a check balance. So whenever the process is enough, that gene will be activated and the process stop. In cancer, especially in ECD, melanoma, thyroid, lung cancer, what we found is that when you have that mutation at the BRAF pathway or the MEK pathway, what happens is that you will have continuous signaling for growth that resulted in cancer. So by, by using a BRAF inhibitor or MEK inhibitor, you stop that process from happening. So currently on the market, there is three um, available BRAF inhibitor. I list both the brand name, generic name. Um, unfortunately, generic is not available, so only the brand name um, is available um, at this time. I like to put them side by side so that way we can compare to see what's the difference in between the three uh, agents. So typically for Z, so what we're looking is at is the FDA approved um, indication. So only one, the Zebrap has the ECD indication. Um, but we are using Tapilar as well as Braptobi. They are uh, a great alternative because of the unfavorable toxicity profile of the uh, Zebrap or Um So let's talk about how 
all these drugs being dosed. So typically, I like to point out that for ECD, you don't really have to use high doses for the treatment. We usually start out with half doses and we got great response. Now the reason I put it up there is for you to see what are the barrier for you as a patient when you're taking these medication, right? So if you look at the Zelbrap, you're gonna have to take two to four tablets twice a day. The Tepinler, you're gonna have to take one to three, and the Braptovi is gonna do six to nine taps daily, right? So looking at that, Tepinler is actually a very apparent choice at this time, right? The caveat for that is that you have to basically take it on an empty stomach. Um, that means that you're gonna have to take one or two hours uh, one hour before your meal or two hours after, okay? The nice thing is that the nausea potential for this drug is very, very minimal. So typically, you don't really need an anti-nausea before you take the medication. For Zebrap um, and the Raptobi, you can take it with or without food, but it's actually recommended, especially for the Zebrap, for you to take it with food because that would um, decrease the potential for nausea. Now. In terms of nausea potential for this medication, we have to be uh, very careful with using the anti-nausea medication. The caveat is because for Zebrap, for all of these agents, you have the risk of running into arrhythmia. And a lot of the anti-nausea medication that used to prevent nausea will cause that arrhythmia. So that's when your, that's is when your <coughs> pharmacist, the role of your pharmacist is very important. Pharmacists will basically look at the patient's profile, look at the, what kind of drug the patient is on, and kind of guide the physicians to uh, choose the type of anti-nausea medication that the patient is on. Okay, so in terms of side effects for these medication, um, you can see what I put it on this slide is that those are the class side effects, meaning that whichever agent that you use, you're going to have the same side effects. It's just the intensity of it. It depends on how sensitive you are. The intensity of it depends on what agent that you're going to see. So typically, you're going to see um, a maculopapular rash, and I'll have some pictures to show you. We also will see cutaneous squamous cells carcinoma. That's very, very, uh, uh, it's a very apparent side effect. You will have some hair loss. You will have some <coughs> ocular toxicity, uh, like you can have inflammation of your eyes, you can have blur vision, hand foot syndrome, um, I have a picture for that as well. Photosensitivity is the biggest barrier to our patient, especially when you're using Zelbarac. It's not only the suns will get you, the heat will get you as well. So you can go, as some of you will know, you can use sunscreen, SPF 30, 45, 60, okay? And you can cover yourself with UV protection. If you get to the heat for about 10 minutes, you will come in looking like a third degree sunburn, okay? So for that reason, Zebrap is not a very appealing uh, drug. So we've been using a lot more of the Tacanar, okay? Um, you will have some chills and fever, that is very apparent with these drugs, especially if you use the Tacanar. So that's the difference. So with Zebrap, you can see a lot of photosensitivity. You're going to see a lot more arrhythmia uh, that require a baseline EKG. So if your physician starts you on Zebrap, please make sure that you have an EKG. That EKG testing to see if you have any abnormality in the conduction path of your heart. Okay, and that needs to be repeat two weeks after you start the medication, monitor monthly for the next two months, and then kind of periodically, okay. Uh, for the tap and large, you're gonna see a lot more chills, a lot more fever, it can be very violent, uh, the shaky can be very violent, your temperature can go up as far as 104, okay. And it may last good for several days. Um, Brad told me we have not used it because it's been approved this year, so I'm hoping that maybe the next time when we meet, I may have more experience with the drug. Um, I will start using this combo, the, the Brad Toby and the Mac Toby for my melanoma next week. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. 
So looking at MEK inhibitor, so there are three MEK inhibitor on the market right now, and they kind of go couple. So the mechanism will usually go with the tablet, and then the cartelic usually go with the Zelgraf, and the Mectovi will go with Raptovi. Um, not too excited about MEK inhibitor. So when do we really use MEK inhibitor? So we use MEK inhibitor in patients that cannot tolerate BRAF inhibitor, patients who fail, and especially in patients that have substantial amount of cutaneous squamous cells carcinoma because that show in melanoma study that it will suppress that from coming on. So we have been using it for a lot of our patients, uh, but the dosing that we use is actually half of the recommended dose for ECD. Now, right now, there is a trial that going looking at MEK inhibitor in the setting for patients with ECD who don't have that BRAF mutation. So that's being studied right now. I have one patient that's being on it. She has a really good response after two or three weeks. The nice thing with this agent is that it responds very quick. You can get a response within um, a week or two. So typically your symptoms will become much, much better. Your pain especially will become much better after you be on it for a week or two. Uh, in terms of differences, I just want to point out that the only difference is, is that the MEK inhibitor and the mec are being dosed every day. So you take that drug every day. Whereas the Cotelix, you're going to have to do it three weeks on, and then you have one week off. The other caveat I want to point out is that the mechanism has to be stored in the refrigerator. So what happens when you go traveling, right? So the recommendation is that if you have an unbought, unopened bottle of mechanism, you can let it sit at temperature and it will be good for 30 days, okay? However, you, are, you may not be that lucky to have the, the open bottle. So typically, what is being recommended is that you use the thermal cups, right? So you would put the thermal cup into the freezer hours before you travel, and then right before you re get ready to travel, <laughs> you can put your medication in the thermal and you have about six to eight hours, right? That's pretty smart, right? But it's not me, I'm not that smart. Um, I just got that from the drug lab, okay? Um, in terms of the um, side effects, you, whatever that you see with the BRAF inhibitor, you will see with basically, um, you know, you will see with the MEK inhibitor. I, I just feel so bad because I didn't know that I can take it off, so I can basically pick, you know, kind of look down to the audience, um, I, I apologize. Um, so the only things that I want to point out is for the MEK inhibitor, you get more of a um, lung toxicity with the MEK inhibitor, and you also get more of a acne form rash, uh, kind of uh, rash that you're gonna see. Um, and everything else is the same, nothing different. Um, we use a lot of mechanism just because we use a lot of tapular because it has a more favorable uh, toxicity profile. Okay, so we went over the differences in the BRAF inhibitor and then we went over the uh, MEK inhibitor. So now, the biggest thing is toxicity, right? How are we gonna manage this toxicity, right? So at our cancer center, we have a program for our patients. So whoever is taking oral chemotherapy, it, uh, those patients will be signed on to my service, and that, um, and we will call the patient. We will take care of the patient from head to toe. So we make sure that the prescription is being written correctly. Somebody's working on it. We call the patients on a weekly basis, sometimes three or four, four times, four days a week, just to make sure that our patients are, are um, doing well. And we triage all the phone call, and we talk to the doctors, and we make recommendations. So we're very, very familiar with these agents. Okay, so in terms of chills and fever. So your fever can start any time from within your first month. If you can be doing well within your first month, and all of a sudden you start running fever and chills, and you can shake, and the shake can be very violent, okay? Um, with, with whenever that happens, the first thing that you need to get yourself into is to take Tylenol. All you need is 500 milligrams of Tylenol. 
and you can repeat that every six hours. Now, if your fever is not resolved within 24 to 48 hours, what happens is that we will take you off of the medication. So we'll hold the medication. We wait until the, the fever resolves. And if it doesn't re resolve, we may have to give you some kind of steroid. So typically, we'll give you a prednisone 10 milligram for five days. And then if that resolves, resolve, then we can resume. But then we're going to have to do dose reduction, right? And in some patients, we have patients taking 500 milligram of Tylenol prior to each dose of the BRAF inhibitor. Um, or if it's become an issue, we may have to switch agent, right? Um, so that is how we handle the, the, the fever, the chills, and the sweat, the flu-like symptom. Now for skin rash, you're going to see that it can occur within days. This medication will make your skin very dry. Sometimes the rash is visible. It can be an acne form rash. It can be high looking rash. The rash can be associated with pruritus, with itchiness, right? So typically, when you start this medication, we want you to stay on moisturizer. So always use moisturizer. You can use any type of moisturizer. The one that we found is very effective is either the Norwegian formula or um, some, some cream called CeraVe, and that is very effective to use to make sure that you stay um, you know, moisturized. The, if it's bad enough, we'll put you on hydrocortisone, 2.5% cream. A lot of time, we don't get it covered, so you have to use over-the-counter product, and a lot of time, it's working. In terms of itchiness, Benadryl is really your best friend. It's going to be every six hours, and that will take care of the itchiness. Okay? Um, if it's acne for rash, if it's bad enough, we may have you start using, you know, to put you on um, oral antibiotics as well as the um, oral steroid, but it's very short course. We usually use like metrodose pack for five days, and then um, the symptoms should be taken care of. Um, hair for syndrome is another one is very debilitating, especially you will see that with the tapenlar. Um, and the symptoms start by having some redness, some tenderness at the bottom of your feet, and, that, and then you will have some skin thickening. So typically, before you start the medication, we highly recommend that you moisturize yourself, use utterly smooth cream three or four times daily, um, and then on top of that, you can use Vaseline can use apple for ointment at night and wrap it with saran wrap if you don't have cotton socks. Okay, that is a good alternative. A lot of podiatrists really recommend that. Okay, um, and then if it's bad enough, we have to use urea cream and then we send you to podiatry. So here's the rash that you can see, okay, with this agent. So this is called the uh, macular rash because it's not raised. And here's the handful syndrome. Okay. It goes from minimal symptom to severe symptom. Okay. So the first things first, whenever you feel that discomfort when you're walking, please call your oncologist. Please call your pharmacist. That's what they're there for. Make them work for their money. <laughs> well, the next thing would be cutaneous squamous cells, right? So typically what this look like this, okay? So typically, what you need to do is that we're gonna refer you to a dermatologist. That's why it's very important for you to establish that relationship with your dermatologist, okay? Right away when you first get the medication because it's recommended you see the dermatologist every two months, okay, while you're on this medication. So when this happens, we're not holding a drug. We still have you take the medication. We send you to the dermatologist, get that removed, and then they will send that for biopsy to make sure that it's not real cancer that we have to worry about. And then we, we, we just go on, okay? There is a, um, some use of niacinamide, which is vitamin B3. Um, that is being studied. Uh, it, it, it was a phase three study. It's called an on-track study for uh, preventions of non-melanoma skin cancer. It's very effective, 500 milligrams twice a day, but I use it on four of my patients and 
unfortunately, it didn't really work. So I have to add on a MEC inhibitor low dose, and sure enough, everything is gone once I got the MEC inhibitor on board. Diarrhea is very common, especially when you use a combo. Um, so always have Imodium on board. The problem with Imodium is that it's gonna cause you to have a lot of bloating, a lot of gas, a lot of constipation. If you take too much, you end up with constipation. If you don't take enough, you're gonna end up with diarrhea. Then some of the diarrhea can stay persistent, right? So uh, recently, we start using cholesterol, which is an agent for cholesterol. It was shown in a trial that was very effective because I have other drugs that causing um, tremendous diarrhea. And sure enough, this is like a miracle. So you only take one gram twice a day, it re reduces the need of using Imodium. It's a lot, a lot. You don't have constipation issue, you don't have gas, you don't have bloating. So this is a win-win, right? The next one that can be very debilitating is arthralgia. If you have a history of arthritis, it will be very debilitating. It can cramp your hand to the point that you cannot open. Okay. So there's nothing that is effective for arthralgia unless some of you have used, we use everything. The most effective one is low dose steroid. But you know, usually it takes its course and then two or three months it's gone. But it reduces a lot of dose reduction. This is one of the barriers where the drug has to be discontinued or dose reduced. <coughs> So going on, arrhythmia, congestive heart failure, serious stuff, right? It's rare, but it can be fatal. So make sure your um, oncologist order an EKG, order an echocardiogram. Make sure that they do that before you start the drug, okay? Um, also, during the therapy, make sure you eat, uh, you, can, you, you eat the rich ma magnesium, rich food, as, as well as potassium. Because if you don't have that, if, if you don't have that, then what happens is that you are more prone to arrhythmia. So usually green fatty, um, green leafy vegetable, um, nuts, um, salmon, halibut, those are food that are rich in both potassium and magne magnesium. So make sure that you have enough during treatment, okay? And that's the best way to absorb because a lot of time, supplement that we give you is gonna give you more diarrhea. Pneumonitis is a rare side effect, and usually it happens when you use a MEC inhibitor. So usually the symptoms come on with some shortness of breath, um, cough, and this is a dry cough, it's not productive at all, but it's constantly. You will recognize it right away. So if that happens, you pick up the phone, call your oncologist right away, we will bring you in, we'll stop the medication, bring you in, we'll get a chest x-ray, if it's confirmed, we will start you on a corticosteroid, like five days metro, metro dose pack. Everyone heard of metro dose pack, right? And then once it's resolved, it depends on how bad it is. The medication may be discontinued permanently, or we have to definitely dose reduce you and watch you very closely. Um, the last one is ocular toxicity. Um, that happened, the blood vision is a very common side effect, but we still have to send you to the ophthalmologist to make sure that your pressures in your eyes are still okay. So that's very crucial to have that established relationship with the ophthalmologist as well as the dermatologist at the beginning of your treatment. Because dermatologists, it's very hard for you to get in as well as the ophthalmologist, okay? So if you see any redness in your eyes, if you see any double vision, blur vision, Blur vision, make sure that you talk to the oncologist about that. We're almost done. So in a summary slide, I just want to list the do and the don't. And I'm sure a lot of you are pro now, by now, uh, that you're on this treatment. So basically, always wash your hand before and after, okay? Always flush the toilet twice, if you can, if you remember, uh, because you know, these are targeted agent, but you still don't want to be exposed to it. Um, always use sunscreen. Avoid the sun's the best between 10 to 4 in Florida, okay? Um, always read the labeling. Always follow, always asking your oncologist. The reason I'm saying this is because when we see you, we will basically write a prescription for the full dose that we think that you can tolerate. But we may not start you at the full dose. So always follow the instruction closely. 
Um, set an alarm on your phone, on your calendar, to make sure that you uh, don't miss a dose, and always have the monitor on hand. Now, if you're using the, ta the tablet alarm product, always ask your physician for a, uh, what they call a starter kit. And in that starter kit, there is a very fancy thermometer that you can, that they provided for you to use. And that one, you can plug on your iPhone, and it will report at your temperature for you, and it tell you whether or not you have a fever. And I, I tested myself, so it's, it's, uh, I, I can attest to that, it's working pretty well. Always check with pharmacists about copay. Always check with pharmacists about assistance. Don't ever pay, pick up your prescription with a high copay, okay? Because, <laughs> unless you have a lot of money, then you can donate it to me, okay? Um, because your vouchers are available. They can give you a 30-day supply without any charge. I can get sample for you, and so therefore, there's no need to pay that out of pocket. Right? So always talk to them about that. If you have commercial insurance, you will have a $25 copay. Right? And then always um, stay up to date with your vaccination. It's targeted therapy. You don't have to hold anything. Okay? Uh, don't, don't open, I think that is saying that I'm out of time, but because we have technical difficulties, so I can go on for one minute, right? Okay, so. <laughs> Don't open, don't open the capsule. Don't ever open the capsule, okay? Um, take it as a whole. Store medication in a place that you don't have temperature, very in temperature, right? And I'm sure you know that. Um, don't take additional dose after you throw up. Just assume that you take that already, okay? Um, Grapefruit and grapefruit juice are not recommended, especially with the zebra and the uh, Brattoli, okay? Because what it does is that it's blocking the breakdown of the medication, so you end up with more drug. More drug doesn't mean that you have more efficacy. It means that you have more toxicity, okay? Um, always allow pharmacy seven days for your refill. The reason being is because your insurance change all the time. So from the, this review to the next review, we may get a rejection, right? And then if you allow them seven days, then you can call your pharmacist and ask to see if they can, if she or he or she can get sample for you, okay? Um, herbal products, OTC product, please check with your pharmacist. Use your pharmacist for this, okay? And last but not least, please call if you have any doubt at all. If you see anything differently that you have not seen before you take the medication, okay? Uh, pick up the phone and call, okay? Uh, so with that, I will basically conclude my talk and I hope that uh, I provide information that is helpful for you. Um, or if you have any questions, um, you know, you can always call us here and we'll be happy to help you with that. Uh, with that, I think that the break is coming uh, up. I can take any questions. If if anybody have any questions, yes, sir. Really quick, this, this may apply to everybody here, but on vacation, the uh, the mechanism. Yes, sir. It is a little bit of a challenge to when traveling to take hold. Um, so what I've done in some cases is uh, attach the um, the Prio at CVS or. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's appropriate, but um, you know, one of my patients, uh, the problem is that she cannot even get that on board. So I, I think that it depends on the airline or whatnot, but that is an acceptable option. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone.